Yidashimase. Hello and welcome to Fataris' Kitchen. I'm your host, Chef Fataris. It's time once again for Shoot'em Up Saturday. And on the menu this week, we have the Alista Collection, the latest in the M2 Shot Trigger series. What kind of taste will it have? Let's get cooking and find out. From developer M2, the Alista Collection released for the PlayStation 4 and the Nintendo Switch on December 24th, 2020. A wonderful Christmas present from M2. So what is this Shot Trigger series? Up to this point, it's been a collection of arcade perfect ports to home consoles. Mostly the PlayStation 4, but also recently the Nintendo Switch. However, this title breaks that mold a little bit. Instead of being um, arcade titles, it's a collection of Sega Master System and Sega Game Gear titles from the Alista series. Unfortunately, at this point, several of the Shot Trigger series are only available in Japan, including this one. Although, I can highly recommend all of them, especially if you're okay with import titles. Uh, and although the price point does seem a little bit high on this one, I do feel it's worth it, specifically for the game we're going to be focusing on today, GG Alista 3. So with that out of the way, let's hop to the main menu of the collection. So here we see the Alista collection in all of its glory. There are a total of five games present, six if you count alternate versions. Under the Alista menu, you have the ability to select between Alista and Power Strike, which is the English version. Uh, the game series itself has some interesting history, both among these titles here that came out for the uh, Master System and the Game Gear, and then the other titles that would see release on other platforms afterwards. Um, for example, Power Strike 2 was developed for release only outside of Japan. It released in Europe and Brazil, which I find to be fascinating, especially as a 1993 Sega Master System title. Then we also have the... Uh, this is one of the main focuses of the game itself, is the um, Game Gear titles. So we've got the GG Alista, GG Alista 2, and the Piece de Resistance, GG Alista 3. This title right here is worth the price of the entire collection for me myself. It's a game that's developed for the, the Game Gear to run within the constraints of the Game Gear, but it was developed in 2020, and that's something that I find to be amazing. So if you buy the super, like a high, well, I guess the price isn't terrible, but if you buy the higher price limited edition, you can get the white Game Gear Micro that has all these titles on it, including the new GG Alista 3, which I think is incredible to have a new Game Gear title in 2020. Starting the game, of course, these are all emulated, so you'll have a little bit of emulation here. There is this how to play, which pops up, though you can check mark it to have it not come up each time. It's nice just to see the controls. Um, although, as far as that's concerned, it is relatively basic. We do have this nice little anime opening that, once again, I want to stress, this game was developed to run on a Game Gear, and I think that's... I just like love that that new retro vibe that's here. It has all those kind of uh, bells and whistles you would expect from a modern shoot 'em up, but on an older system. Starting the game, you have your options menu here at the start screen, so we can increase our stock all the way up to nine. To make things easy on ourselves, we'll do that. We can also change the level, and there's a nice sound test. Starting the game itself, we're dropped in on wave one, the hacking storm. So. Right up here, you can see on the left and right, we've got the typical awesome HUD that M2 provides, the M2 gadgets, which provide us with all sorts of information about the game itself, including a really neat uh, controller display on the bottom left that shows which buttons we're pressing and what direction like uh, we happen to be pressing. On the right, it's a whole bunch of weapon information. There's also some nice achievements that we've got on there. And there's also um, scores, including like a, when we hit our next extent. So this is a game developed in 2020. And as you can see here, they might have pushed the boundary of what the Game Gear is capable of. By its default, there's a lot of flicker and slowdown. However, 
if we go into the options of the game itself, there's a way to deal with that. So if you, on the Nintendo Switch, which, by the way, is the version we're looking at today, if that wasn't obvious, um, if you press the minus button, it pulls up the game's menu, and you can go into the option settings here. There are uh, one setting in particular that we care about, this one here at the very top, Kaiteki Modo, which is basically optimized mode. If we turn this on, of course, when we leave the menu, it'll ask us to reset the game, which we will do. So what does this optimized mode do for us? It basically uh, is like uh, removing the limiter of uh, restricting this to be like perfect Game Gear emulation, basically allowing it to take advantage of the modern hardware it's running on. So instead of slowdown and flicker, we've got a smooth running game that's got this beautiful 8-bit aesthetic to it. So it's it's wonderful that they included that kind of a mode in the game itself as it really, really increases the enjoyment you can get out of uh, this game in particular, but really all of the uh, Alista series um, has that uh, option available on it. So, that said, let's talk a little bit about the game itself. Uh, as far as a control standpoint is concerned, for a vertical scrolling shooter, this one is relatively straightforward. There's only one button, your fire button, which fires both your main weapon as well as your um, sub weapon. You always have a sub weapon. When you start the game, you start off with your default, uh, the all range, which I do not like in the least. So all your sub weapons are displayed there on the right. They're, uh, the different power ups you'll pick up to change your sub weapons are in letters and those letters are represented uh, in displays so you can kind of get an idea of what each sub weapon does. In addition to seeing that once you have an active sub weapon it will display your sub weapon in the middle there uh, with its current level, level 3. So let's talk a little, about, a little bit about the various power-ups we've been picking up. So of course the letters will change your power-up. So you've got A for the all range, C for the chaser, D for the defensive uh, bits, F for the firewall, R for the rising laser, which is another one that I really like. So I really like the chain chaser and I really like the rising laser. And uh, T for the turret guns. Um, You'll also have these like uh, reddish ones that as we destroy, actually none, neither of those are on here. So this big green P will power up the level of your sub weapons. There are the, uh, more, the orange colored uh, ships which drop these P's and those power up our main gun, which is the top right display. In addition to powering up our main gun, the P's serve another function. If you collect enough of them, which is 20, they will activate what is called the G-Field, which is basically a shield which can absorb some damage and some shots. Really useful. So we've made it through Stage 1, and we find ourselves at our Stage 1 boss. So the boss fights are something that I really enjoy in this game. Is, is If you're a little underpowered, they can be quite a challenge to figure out and handle. However, like uh, going through the stage and picking up as many power-ups as we had, the first stage boss was a cakewalk. That's not going to be the case going forward um stage or wave five's boss in particular is actually quite a challenge uh, and that's one that i like absolutely love um so keep in mind once again this is developed for 8-bit hardware uh, so it looks like and runs great with the limiter removed but the fact that it's still uh can run on a uh, game gear i think is just something that's incredible the game itself does have a total of eight, um, well, stages, waves, however you want to refer to them. And um, there are a couple different rankings uh, that you can obtain. So there's uh, two ranking modes. There's the default, where if you haven't changed any of the settings. And then there's the um, all mix uh ranking leaderboard where if you have changed some of the settings that's on the leaderboard you'll uh, be on the same menu that we turned on the uh, optimized mode there are some modes to change um, your the difficulty settings as well as your weapon preference as it is possible to have uh, all the power-ups be one particular type so even if this was an R we could have it be like a C for example if all we wanted was C's 
it's kind of a fun way to customize the game to your taste in uh, my ideal. Uh, let's see, which one have we not shown off? I don't think we've seen the firewall yet. It's another one that I'm not that big of a fan of, so about half of the weapons I like, and the other half are, I, well, like some of them I feel are just like straight up garbage. So the all range here is a great example of that. It will fire in the opposite direction you're moving, um, but given that uh, most of the enemies come from above, you don't want to be moving back all the time as it makes it quite difficult. The defensive bits definitely has its advantages, the chaser is basically a homing, and that's always wonderful. The firewall itself is kind of like a napalm, but unlike a normal like napalm attack, I just feel that it kind of comes across as weak. So unfortunately, we have lost our shield, the G field. Um, so over there on the right, underneath uh, the character portrait, you'll uh, see the activation units with the uh, orange P power ups. So we need to collect 20 of those again to activate. Uh, that particular power-up. Um, also in the display, you've got uh, the music that's uh, on that's currently playing, which is for the GG Alista 3 in particular. Very relevant as uh, I love this boss's intro, like uh, chopping up this um, space colony that we're flying through. Um, but like the music in this game is just awesome. And speaking of awesome, this boss is just awesome. So a really high level main shot is wonderful for handling those pesky, oh boy, those pesky missile barrage that the boss has. But this boss also has some interesting attacks where he has this like laser ability and like he fires uh, some faster ones <laughs> straight up the middle as well as some green ones from either side. Uh, so, if you can dodge it easily enough, if you avoid the stay to the side and just uh, split the difference, man, I'm not reading this guy right. So it does give me the opportunity to talk about um, the when you die, how you respawn. So rather than have checkpoints or um, other situations like that, you respawn in the same spot. You just lose one level of both your sub weapon and your main shot. Uh, which, if you've built them up to a certain point, can be pretty painful, but isn't damning. It will make the rest of the fight more difficult. That's where some of the enjoyment in the game really comes from. As, if, well, if it's a little bit too easy, it's like, you know, that kind of like uh, ruins the enjoyment. Anyway, that is GG Alista 3, served up for your enjoyment. So as you can see, I, I basically just been like gushing about this game. I love it. Uh, for a title that's uh, brand new and developed for basically like retro hardware, this is just an incredible game. It has like uh, that look of an older uh, shoot 'em up, but the feel is a modern one that just comes across as just incredible. So, as I said, the price of entry for the Alista collection, this title is all I need to be happy with my uh, purchase. Um, but the fact that there are like uh, four other, like a uh, very decent shoot 'em ups for the era that they released is wonderful. Uh, really, actually, I'm kind of underselling the series as the Alista series is um, one of the more respected of uh, all shoot 'em ups. And it's one that I like, that's been a failing of mine that I have not covered any up to this point. So, along those lines, if you're interested in me covering other titles in like uh, this series off of this collection, uh, please like do comment in the comments below and I would be happy to follow up on that. But let's talk a little bit about the minus flavors and the plus flavors. So, the biggest minus flavor I have for this title is just its lack of uh, difficulty settings. You've got the... Uh, main difficulty, the special difficulty, which is basically your hard, and then there's an interesting one you can turn on in the options, the auto rank, um, which will make things, uh, what, at least in my feeling, substantially more difficult. Um, but the plus flavors, there are a lot. So the biggest plus flavor for this game itself, specifically Alistair 3, 
I love the various like sub weapons you have, and for the most part, the other Alistair games have the same weapon selection or uh, uh, rough equivalents. They might not always have the same names, but they basically serve the same function. Um, Power Strike 2 being the notable like uh, difference, um, but once again, I said that one's kind of the black sheep of the series. Then you also have some really awesome boss fights that just. Once again, kind of like blow me away. Like this was like uh, developed on um, 8-bit hardware. <laughs> it, it's just something that, yeah, I, it's just incredible. And uh, then you've got the music itself is another thing I just love about this game. That and really the biggest thing is that new retro feel so it's a new game but yet at the same time like immediately it's retro and that's just that's something that just kind of has a special feel all its own and uh then talking about the collection in general it's just another awesome shot triggers release from m2 having all those titles uh being perfectly emulated or in this version if you so choose like a uh, uh, more optimized uh, emulation, which um, it really it eliminates some of the problems of the original hardware, is incredible. As well as just having like uh, those titles, and all the various um, M2 gadgets on the side of the screen to help you easily understand the systems that are going on there. It's just I love the whole package. And as I can, I was mentioning in my introduction. I can't recommend the any of the M2 shot triggers enough. It's if you're a fan of shoot 'em ups, then like uh, they're definitely games that and releases that I recommend you play. All right, that'll just about wrap it up for this episode of Shoot 'em Up Saturday, and that'll also wrap up my Shoot 'em Up Saturdays for the year 2020. It's I gotta say, this has been a year, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what the year 2021 will bring, uh, but I'm glad that we did make it through the year. It's been a rough one, and I thank, I want to thank everybody that's been uh, here along with the ride uh, for me through all my videos. Your like viewership and support really mean the world to me. So... Thank you for 2020 as like uh, hard as it's been, and I hope to like see your like continue having your support in 2021 and beyond. I hope you had uh, let's see a uh, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and have a Happy New Year. <laughs>